and welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm your host, Lynn Weaver. The program is brought to you by Davis Media Access and broadcast on Davis Community Television, that's Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T Uverse 99. We're also online at davismedia.org, so log on to our website and check us out. Today's topic is a very interesting one. We are going to talk about the evolution of the insect bri uh, br uh, tribe, sorry, <laughs> the evolution of the insect tribe. And my guest today is Emmett Brady. Thank you so much for being here and uh, thank you for your time and for your commitment to our community. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be here. So I would like you to meet Emmett Brady, he's the producer and the host of two amazing weekly radio shows on 95.7 on FM, uh, KDRT in Davis, California. Every Wednesday, Emmett hosts the Science Double Day from 4 to 6 p.m. From 4 to 5 p.m., he hosts the Insect News Network and from 5 to 6 p.m. he hosts Expanding Science. The Insects News Network also plays on Friday from 12 to 1. As a scientist, an entertainer, an original thinker, and a business person, and a public speaker, Emmett introduces himself as a professional cultural entomologist. And he might be the only one in the world. He also calls himself an ambassador of the insect tribe. Well, um, Emmett, tell us about your mission with the Insect News Network. Well, um, the Insect News Network is a multimedia exploration of the microcosm, and uh, we like to take people into the world of insects, beyond the creepy and the crawly, to the fun, the fascinating, the profound, and even the sublime. And that uh, little phrase there t is an evolution over uh, several years. It took me a while to come up with the exact wording, because I wanted to, to uh, kind of redefine how people understand uh, our co-evolution and our, our, the world we live in as far as the little creatures go, the six and eight legged creatures. And of course when I talk about the Insect News Network it covers uh, insects, spiders, anything, all the invertebrates that we have to you know, live with on land. And butterflies. Uh, butterflies of course, yeah, yeah. And there's so many different uh, kinds of creatures and um, their impact that they have on us as a culture is just as important to me as the science of the insects. So I take all the information and all the facts and the figures and I put it onto three platforms, which is the practical, the compelling, and the sublime. And uh, really what I look into is uh, the kind of blending into an estuary where the sciences of the insects matches with the humanities, the social studies, and the arts. And how inf insects have influenced our humanity is just as important as anything that is covered in the sciences, except that it's not very, very well represented. So uh, I tried to create a platform both uh, with the radio show, with the videos that I do, a lot of the writing that I do, uh, so people can express how they think and how they feel about insects and it has been an absolutely mind-blowing ride uh, it, since I started this. You know, yeah. What people have to say is really fascinating. Well you know it is fascinating the way you view uh, the world of insects from uh, so many different angles uh, as a scientist, as an artist, as a multimedia producer mm -hmm. and uh, also what is fascinating to me is uh, the the you you make the insect world uh, relatable to our world mm. we're interdependent yes i particularly like your website ah, yeah. i think it's a great website and uh, we we're uh, going to have a um, uh, a display of uh, Emmett's um, uh, inter uh, Insect News Network uh, homepage, mm -hmm. and he's going to give us a mini tour okay, right. of what it is. And uh, uh, so, uh, the there we are. It's um, 
Yeah, well, so what you're looking at is the home page, and, and again, it's, it's a pretty much a standard page where you know, we have different sections where people can learn about different aspects, but I really tried to create a, visual, a visually engaging uh, website that doesn't just feature insects. And uh, the reason why is because uh, a lot of websites about bugs, uh, Facebook pages and, and uh, blogs, focus on the science of the insects, which is so, so important. But that's only half the story. So what I try and do is take all of that and put it into a context that really makes a different th difference to people. And that's how it manifests uh, in the art, in the literature, in the cinema, uh, in the, the multimedia. I like to tell people that our generation gets to experience the microcosm uh, in a way that no human society has ever been able to do. And it's because of the digital era. It's because of the new types of photography, new types of videography, the internet. And this explosion is happening around the world right now of an interest in insects. For a lot of reasons that are sort of selfish, you know, we have climate change, we have agricultural issues, we have a lot of economic issues. But then there's the other side of the insect story too, the profound influence that they've had on, on how we think, our emotional uh, states, um, how we envision ourselves, our dream states, our, our modern mythology, as I like to say, the modern narrative about insects. And so this website is really about engaging people with both halves of the brain. That's how, that's how I like to put it. So. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, you know, um, I I couldn't help but noticing the hexagon that you yeah, have absolutely. on the website, yeah. the blue hexagon. Oh, yeah. Can you tell us a little more about that? Absolutely. Uh, that is is. Uh, uh, taking the story to a very personal level for people who have an affinity for insects. That is the symbol of the insect tribe. Uh, as you know, the hexagon is a very prominent symbol in the insect world. It's the shape of the honeycomb. It's also the shape of the eyes of insects. They have little lenses called uh, omatidium, and they're all hexagons. And so it's a metaphor and it's an actual symbol for the insect tribe. So the idea is that when people see that sign, uh, it, I guess the, the the parallel would be like when the bat signal goes up <laughs> over the city, right? <laughs> it's, it's very fantastic and fun, but it has a very practical meaning too. Yes. Uh, the bearer of the insect tribe hexagon, for instance, yes. um, is somebody who understands a holistic approach to the human uh, impact in the natural world. And they understand that every life form on the planet right now is absolutely equal when it comes to evolution. We tend to see things as a top and bottom, sort of this Darwinian hierarchy, but in fact that's not how things really work on the planet. And when you get into the idea of the insect tribe, um, some of them are scientists, many of them are not, but they're people who understand that our relationship to the natural world is at a critical time. And our understanding of how we interact with insects and, and what an amazing influence they are on us as well. Um, it, it, it takes it to the level where we are going to make changes for the future. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm codifying the voice of people around the world. People who don't like bugs are very outspoken. But I found that people who really have an affinity, a curiosity, or like myself, an obsession with the microcosm, mm -hmm. um, they come from every walk of life. They, they defy and, and incorporate every type of demographic, mm -hmm. regardless of education, academic level, their religion doesn't matter, where they live doesn't matter. They are all around the world. Well, it's, it, I'm glad you used the term evolution because uh, that's what uh, our topic is about today. Sure. So could you elaborate a little bit about the evolution of the insect tribe? Yeah. What do you mean about that? Well, I started in my own career, uh, I, I started off in the sciences, but, but my experience and exposure to the full context of insects was limited. Uh, I do have a degree in biology, but in the whole four years of studying, I only had two years of insect science. Yeah, right? and I think this is a very common theme is that this is the most ubiquitous life form on the planet. Amazing diversity, amazing importance. Uh, some of them are our greatest allies, some of them are, are seem to be mortal enemies, yet they all encompass this idea of wherever humans go, the bugs are there as well. So um, they're also very powerful. Very much. If so, we yeah. think of the mosquito, sure. or the mosquito that brings the dengue uh, yeah. fever, I mean they can be lethal. Yeah. Uh, so we are a little bit afraid of them as yeah. well, but and, and we that's, forget course, that they're also very useful to us. Absolutely. Yes. And, and when people have to turn their attention to insects, they have to think on a on a systematic scale.
Uh, any individual bug, right, is just like any individual person. You know, how does one person make a difference in, in yes. 7 billion uh, population and growing? It's not the individual bug, it's how they fit into the systems, the ecosystems. It's not the individual person, it's how they fit into society. And that's a direct parallel. Yes. And more importantly, um, there's this beautiful, poetic, elegant narrative about insects that is historical. It's as ancient as it gets. The oldest cave paintings featuring uh, humans and insects interacting is, is about 10,000 years old from a cave in Spain. It shows a person harvesting honey. That ancient connection has a modern narrative that just isn't told. And the, I, I think it's the digital generation that's showing this in a whole new light. One of my favorite topics for the insect tribe is uh, insect tattoos. And all of you in the insect tribe, I want to see your tattoos. I've been <laughs> documenting them for the past couple years. And, and the people who it's are... It's true, they are very popular. Very popular. Yes. The butterfly tattoo is, is among the most popular tattoos, tattoos in the world for women. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but beyond that, what we need to do is, as we're looking at huge issues in our culture of climate change and economic upheaval and, and the socio-global political climates changing. And agriculture. Agriculture, how we grow very, our food for an exploding yes. population, uh, disease control. When we can portray the insects in their proper scale, in a format that ignites the curiosity and the passion and the connection with people around the world, this is the mission of the insect tribe, well then people can look to the future including insects in the global conversation as opposed to trying to eradicate them. They don't go away. That's it, the point. It, it sounds fascinating and you know as I was thinking about our interview uh, this morning I couldn't help thinking that it's spring oh, and yeah. uh, spring it seems like we are much more aware of insects yeah. so whether it's bees or butterflies or uh, even the ones that most people don't want around mosquitoes you know? silverfish yes. cockroaches so, all of them come so out. Yeah. Is, is spring your favorite your favorite season well I'm a summer boy I was born in August <laughs> so I like the summers everything's a little bit easier in the summertime but but actually the spring is a great metaphor for what I think is emerging with the insect tribe. When you see the insects, that's the manifestation of, of weeks and months of them, you know, in another form, either the egg or the, the larva, and then all of a sudden they come alive as adults and we bring our awareness to yeah. them. With the insect tribe, that's how I feel, is that we're putting out the call for people who have this affinity, this, this obsession with the insects, yes. and they come in all shapes and sizes. That's the amazing thing about it. And we want to bring them uh, into the conversation, give them a platform through the Insect News Network to express themselves, how they think, how they feel, and it does doesn't matter what their their medium is. They could have a profession that has nothing to do with insects, but their interest and their 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 affinity for the microcosm will help other people yes. understand it. Yes. If you talk about bugs to someone who's not interested in bugs, it's a very alien conversation. Yes. If you talk to them in the context of the arts, the humanities, the social studies, then the context becomes something they can really And that's do. a fascinating point that you're making. And uh, speaking about art and multimedia, uh, I'd like to uh, show our viewers a snippet sure. of a, a video that you have produced. And it's a, it's a video where you explain uh, cultural entomology. And uh, it's the video that you can view on uh, your yeah. website. It, it, this the, actually explains the industry that I work in. So why don't we go to that yes, video? Yes, why we don't we go in and watch it? Okay, so cultural entomology is the third branch of entomology. You have the academic sciences, which are the oldest and most well established. That's the zoology, the morphology, the natural history, the biology and life cycles. And then you have the applied sciences, which are very important for economics and other reasons, so agriculture, pesticides, health and disease control. And then you have this term cultural entomology. It's, it's sort of the lesser known of the three. The term was only really coined a little over 20 years ago by the man who curated the Los Angeles County History Museum. His name is Charles Hogue. And the thing about cultural entomology, it examines the influence, the parallels and connections between humans and insects. And a day like Bug Day here at uh, the Random Museum is one of the great examples of how 
with just a little bit of explanation, a little bit of understanding, and a lot of fascination, this entire world of the microcosm opens up for humans. And as we go forward as a, as a civilization, as a society, we have a lot of decisions and choices to make. And the insects can be inspiration for robotics, for biomimicry, engineering. It can be for health and economic reasons, but it, for also fantastic artistic reasons. Look at this beautiful creature. This is a phasmid from Malaysia. And the, the microstructures, our society gets to learn about insects at a scale and an intimacy that no other culture in human history has ever been able to do with digital photography and videography, microscopy. We get to slow it down, we get to blow it up, and we get to share it with one another instantly across the internet. So all these amazing uh, discoveries that are happening with insects, it's all about understanding our parallels and connections with the natural world. And there are few ambassadors that are easier to find and more fascinating in the long run than our six and eight-legged friends. So that's what the Insect News Network's all about. You know the trains are, right? Imagine that. Wow. Yeah, it, it's a fun video, and I, I made that a few years ago, and I, I'm really eager to make a new one because the field of cultural entomology, as I mentioned, is, is well established, but almost unheard of. It's not taught anywhere. It's certainly not taught in, in the schools, uh, even at the university level. And um, what I've done over the past few years, I've, I've, I dove into different parts of our society to find out what people think and how they feel. I walked in the counterculture, I walked in the mainstream, I talked to scientists and artists and uh, totally people who think outside the box as well as some of the most important thinkers in the world and still I found just little spots and pockets of interest with, uh, and understanding of the insects. So I realized there's a huge opportunity. And then I started to interview people and, and find out what they think and how they feel. That's why this, this, the tagline for the Insect News Network is, it's not just about the bugs, it's about us. I started focusing not on the insects, but on the people who understand the insects. And that has been the most powerful experience. And find the connection hmm. between our world and their world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, find, I, I seem to find it everywhere. That's the fun part. Once you tune your attention to it, they seem just like the insects themselves. Yep. The way people appreciate insects shows up as well. We have another video, and, and I've, I've got about 60 radio shows now, and um, at least 40 to 50 videos that I've done. They can all be seen, uh, most of them can be seen on the website, but this next one was very special. There's a beautiful place down in Key West, and this is an example of the people behind the culture of the bugs, and that's as much about what I do as anything else. Let's watch it. Hello everybody around the world, welcome back to another mobile edition of the Insect News Network and uh, I'm your host E. Ahmed Brady. On the Insect News Network we take you into the world of insects beyond the creepy and the crawly to the fun, the fascinating, the profound and even the sublime and as you can probably tell I am in the seat of sublime. I'm in Key West, Florida right now in one of the most beautiful places on the planet for cultural entomology, well for anything, it's, it's just absolutely stunning. It's the Key West Butterfly Conservatory and I'm here with the uh, progenitor and the creator, one of the partners in the business, Mr. Sam Trophia. Sam, welcome to the Insect News Network. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for that amazing introduction. <laughs> well, it's it, it so deserve it. I mean, you know, we like to look at the influence and parallels between humans and insects, and, and of all the insects of the world, the butterfly is the great ambassador. Obviously, a, a, a space like this takes time, passion, inspiration, and perspiration to create. How did this conservatory come to be? It, uh, it all started with uh, doing the artwork that you saw in our gallery, um, and uh, I figured that um, if, if I can do that, I can do something else. So I started visiting butterfly conservatories that were open all over the world and started putting my own together. And uh, after about eight years of planning and research, uh, this baby broke ground in 2001, and January this month will be 10 years old. Oh, congratulations. So it's you. a birthday. Great. Birthday, and it's, it's one of the most popular attractions on the island, which makes it one of the most popular attractions in the world. Over 160,000 people come to visit the butterflies. And you're getting some special visitors soon. 
in addition to the, is it 60 plus varieties inside the conservatory? 60 plus varieties, and uh, we have a, um, a surprise coming in a couple of weeks, which we haven't announced yet. Yes, yeah, so I won't I'll, I'll okay. let you announce that <laughs> okay, in about great. four weeks. Yeah, they don't just so, have butterflies. There's your hint. There, there you go. But in addition to that, uh, it's a, an important ecological center. And why don't we do this? Let's take a look around the grounds. We'll meet some of the butterflies and maybe some of the people great. who take care of them, too. Look and 28 different species of birds. That's what I was going to say. 28 species 28 of birds. birds. And how many species of plants? That's obviously a big part of it. So it's a little bit of something for everybody. So definitely a place for the gathering of the insect tribe. Keep it in mind, everybody. And let's go look around the conservancy. Wonderful. Yeah, it was, wonderful. it was a wonderful experience. And there's places yes. like that all around the country. Every city and town has somebody who's an ambassador for the insect tribe. And it's, an, it's like a dive into the microcosm in a way that, that people can understand. And, and it's, it's really exciting. All the talks and the lectures that I do, yes. I try and showcase people as much as I showcase the bugs. So. Oh, and, and all of this, of course, you can find on, uh, on Emmett's website, which is insectnewsnetwork.com. Yeah. And uh, they, it's just a wealth of uh, beautiful art and uh, scientifically accurate. It, it's wonderful. Well, you have some uh, slides for us as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like, to, yes. I like to create some really original topics for my lectures as well. So Yes, um, and, and, and you're very well known for your catchy titles. So, I'm, as, you, <laughs> <I hope> so. <laughs> as you comment on some of those, um, the, the slides that we're about to show, you can maybe uh, tell us about some of your catchy titles. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. Well, this was, this was obviously, this was my, one of my favorite shows from the end of the year last year. I did a two-part episode of the Bug of the Year, just like any great countdown of the top 100 <laughs> of the year. I did the top 25 bugs, and then I counted down. I'm not going to tell you what the top bug was, but maybe it wasn't a bug at all. Oh, why not? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't want to give it away. Uh, one of my favorite lectures is called Insects as a Source of Peace and Meditation, and I talk about all the ways that observing and focusing your attention on the microcosm, especially in the very silent fashion that a lot of it operates, is a really transcendent experience. I like to talk about uh, how spiders build their webs. If you ever watch a spider build its web from start to finish, it's absolute masterpiece of art uh, and uh, you know fireflies and water striders and butterflies and dragonflies in the sunset it's all a very meditative experience so that's another one uh, this is probably one of my favorite topics as well insects and urban culture this is where I bring it home uh, you know to, to the people yes. who live in urban areas maybe they're a little disconnected from nature this is where I dive into tattoos as you see that one <laughs> one picture <laughs> is the Rolling Stones album their second greatest hits album called metamorphosis I think it's from 19 75 and it has all the stones they have bug bug heads instead of their own heads on the album cover of course just, based just, on the novel by Kafka uh, actually that's funny they didn't they didn't make their direct connection to Kafka but uh, but uh, it, it's just great when you dive into all the ways they manifest in digital culture video games uh, the online world cinema and music it's just fascinating and there's another one called the digital bug where I talk about the way the insects especially the systematics and the morphology of insects is really inspiring innovations in technology the software bug. the software bug yes. the, the, the term bug comes from a moth <laughs> it wound up in a computer that's where the, the term comes from uh, as well as the um, of course the World Wide Web that's another one that comes that's inspired by insects. And, and this is probably my favorite image because I think as far as the insect tribe what goes... What is it? Well, this is an amazing structure. It's called the corpus pod uh, pediculata, and it is the brain of an insect. It's a structure inside the brain of an insect. Uh, it's considered the seat of consciousness. Uh, I just found out there's a, a whole conversation about the multiplexing effect of these miniature computers and how effic effective they are with just a few thousand neurons. I think right there, that structure is one of the secrets to a non-toxic future for our species. Able to interact and understand how insects perceive the world. We might not be talking to bugs very soon, but I think we'll learn how to communicate with them nonetheless. I'm particularly interested uh, with uh, the, the, last, uh, the, uh, the, the last slide that we showed. Those things in the middle, they yeah. look like teeth, they but do, obviously yeah. they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and since we are in Northern California, just to let everybody know, that's called the mushroom body. That's the, 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 the name mushroom of that, body. The mushroom body, yeah, that's the name I'm, of the I'm yeah. really amazed at your knowledge. Um, but uh, I have a burning question yes. for you, Excellent. and that is, how can people join? Ah. 
good question. The insect tribe. Yeah, well, of course, they're already in it. It doesn't matter if you, if you sign up officially. Go to my website, sign up for our newsletter. It's called The Periodical Buzz. And, um, and I'll be sending out some really neat I information. I love that. The Periodical Buzz. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's coming out in April. And um, uh, more importantly, uh, send me information, in, info at insectnewsnetwork.com. No matter where you are, you can um, become part of the insect tribe. It's a growing movement. And uh, we also are looking for field correspondents and other people with all kinds of uh, media and promotional talents to be part of the Insect News Network. Well, you know, as we um, wrap up, uh, because I'm afraid we're uh, coming uh, to an end of it our happen. interview. It happens for everything, uh, doesn't it? <laughs> I, um, I would like to once again uh, tell our audience uh, that uh, Emmett Brady is the producer and host of two amazing radio shows on 95.7 K uh, uh, ninety point uh, ninety five point seven FM uh, K DRT Cater. and yeah, Cater yeah. and uh, you can uh, go to the website and uh, find out about the programs. Uh, I also want to thank you. It was a pleasure, Emmett, thank you for, uh, for being time. here with us. Uh, uh, Emmett Brady, uh, cultural entomologist extraordinaire. And also, I'd like to thank, uh, thank you all of you uh, watching at home. Now, if you'd like to uh, uh, go to the website or reach Emmett, you can go to the insightnewsnetwork.com, and I think it's at Emmett at no, you can do info in, ad is probably the in, best way info. to reach me. Info, okay. Sure. And, and my shows, my shows are on Wednesdays and Fridays, and on Wednesdays you can do live call-ins to the studio as well. Perfect. So, yeah. And also you can watch this episode of In the Studio online at our uh, website davismedia.org, and while you're there. Uh, you can also check some of our other programs and our archives. And um, I'd like again to uh, say the world of insects is uh, surprising, unseen, buzzing, uh, mysterious, annoying, and also amazing. And always there. And, That's the and, best part. And yeah. always there. <laughs> yeah. well, Please been, help spread the buzz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been watching In the Studio. I'm your host, Lynn Weaver. See you next time.